Hello everybody and welcome to the third video in my series on Python scripting in Krita. In this video I'm going to cover creating extensions with Python in Krita. Now what are extensions? Well extensions are scripts that will run on startup in Krita. Extensions are themselves children of the extension class that is built into the Python Krita library and so they inherit several very useful features and functions from their parent class. Namely, they have built-in ways to be incorporated into the GUI of Krita itself so that you can actually interact with and trigger your script from within your Krita window without having to bring up the Python scripter and use your script that way. Now, as you can see here, I've brought up a scripter window for us to write our initial Python code into. And I'm actually going to go ahead and paste here a template for a basic extension that I actually got from the Krita documentation on their website. Now, this basic template is going to have all of the information that is necessary to create a basic extension, and all of your extensions are going to follow this format for the most part. And I'll go line by line here to explain what all of this stuff means, and I'll also link to the page that contains this template in the description of this video so you can go and copy it yourself. But let's go over this line by line. Now, the first line right here at the very top, of course, simply imports the Krita module. We've, co we've covered that in previous videos. The next important line down here, line 3, is going to define the class my extension, which is just the default name that that template comes with, as a child of the extension object. Now, hopefully you've done some object-oriented programming in Python before, but if you haven't, all that means, all being a child of a parent object means is that the child object, this one that we're working with right here, this child class, is going to inherit the functions and attributes of its parent class. And the libkiss API that I linked to in my first video will include a technical description of what all is in the extension class, but the important things that are come from the extension class are actually already here on the template, and we're actually going to overwrite them with our own code to get to do what we want to do. Now the first function here is the init function, which runs whenever an object of the my extension class is created. Every object has to have a init function, and all that's really happening here is we are explicitly importing, or rather inheriting, the functionality of the extension object, and then we're passing it a variable called parent. You'll see here that the init function takes a argument called parent and then passes this to its parent itself when it initializes. All this actually is supposed to be is the currently running Krita instance. And the reason that it does this is a extension object has to take the currently running Krita instance when it's initialized itself. So we have to manually do that here. The next two functions, setup and create actions, are currently empty, as you can see here by the pass statement in each one of them. We can override both of these if we want, but generally for this tutorial, I'm not going to mess with the setup function very much, and instead I'm going to focus most of my attention here on the create actions function. We are going to override the pass here and replace it with some functionality of our own. And then the very last line here that's important says add extension, and then it has my extension, which is the name of this class up here, krita.instance. All that's doing is creating an instance of a my extension object, passing it a reference to the currently running krita instance, and then adding it to the extensions that are currently available to that Krita instance. Basically, this is just making it available to the Krita application. Now, as I said, we're going to replace a lot of the code here um, to actually make a extension that functions in a custom way for us. And all it's going to do, this extension is going to be very simple. It's just going to pop up a little window when you run it that will give you an option to close the window. It's not going to do anything useful, but it should give you a good idea of how extensions work and how you can extend them yourself to do what you need to do with them. Now, one thing I should mention here is that we're actually going to have to import another module, and this is a module that you are going to get very familiar with if you kind of dive deep into Python scripting with Krita. This module that we're going to have to import is going to be called PyCute. 5, which is the Python wrapper for the Qt5 widget library, which is what is used to program the graphical user interface of Krita itself. Now, we don't need the entire PyQt5 library. We only need one sub-module of it called Qt widgets. And in fact, we only need a small part of that module, namely the classes Q widget and Q message box. We're going to make use of both of those classes here in our code to create the little window that we are going to use to prove that this script works. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the name of the extension. The my extension name just comes with that template, so we'll we'll change it to something unique. We're going to call it 
window test. Now the next thing we're going to do is here in the arguments of the super function, we're going to pass a couple of arguments, namely the class window test and a reference to self. Now next, as I said, I'm not going to do anything here to set up. Instead, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to delete the pass statement here in create actions and we're going to go ahead and add two lines here which will create our actual action. First we're going to say action equals window dot create action and if you'll notice the window that I'm referring to here gets passed as an argument to the create actions function. This will be handled by create itself. It's not something that you have to do manually. It's just that the create actions function has to be assembled in this particular way. But anyway, we're going to say window.createActions and then in parentheses, we're going to put three different strings. The first string is going to need to be a unique identifier for the window test extension. So we're going to say window underscore test underscore ID, which definitely shouldn't be taken anywhere. The next string that we're going to put in is going to be the name of the extension as it appears in our menu. So let's call it window test, just like the class name of the extension is itself. Now it doesn't have to be this. We can go back and we can put a space in it. These are just arbitrary strings, but that way we can identify it quickly when we see it in the menu. And the last string that we're going to put in here will actually describe to create a where to put the button to activate this extension. And we're going to want to put it in tools forward slash scripts. And you'll want to write it exactly like that to make sure it gets put in that particular location. Now the next thing that we're going to want to put here is one last line that says action dot triggered dot connect and then in parentheses show when. Now all we're saying here is that when we trigger the action associated with this extension, we want to actually trigger another function called show when. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what's show when? Well, we haven't actually made it yet. We want to create a function that is separate from the window test extension class here that will be triggered whenever the window tests action is triggered. So we'll do that out here right above the window test class and we'll say def show when. Now this is just going to be a very simple function that will actually show a cute widget Q message box, which will show a little bit of information and let you click off to close it. So to do this, we'll say Q message box dot information, and then in parentheses, Q widget to pass to it a copy of the Q widget class to tell it that we're making it a Q widget, and then two strings. The first will be the title of the window, so we'll call this one window test. And the next one will be the text that actually appears in the window. And we'll say in here, it's a little message, it works, to show that the window does, in fact, work. So we can close that now, and with that, our code for our window test extension is actually done. But we can't simply run this like we can other Python scripts that we've made before. If you watch my previous video, I described how to make a Python plugin for Grip. Now the thing about extensions is, in order for them to work, they're going to need to be loaded up as plugins in Krita. So we're going to have to go ahead and make a plugin for this extension so that we can use it here in Krita itself. Now if you haven't watched my previous video, the second video in this series on creating a plugin for Krita with Python, I encourage you to go ahead and watch that because I'm just going to briefly go over how to do it rather than covering it in detail since I already did that before. And then we will have a plugin for this window test extension up and running and we can go ahead and use it. All right, as you can see, I'm here in my PyCrita directory, which for me is in .local share Krita PyCrita. I've went ahead and created a couple of files that we're going to need. The first one is going to be the window test.desktop file that we're going to need. Again, I explained how to create these in the previous video, um, and this is exactly how we'll want it to look. The only things that I've changed are the xkde library equals, and then I pointed that to the directory window test, which is actually the library that we're going to use here, our custom library. And then I've just changed the name and comment strings to something that's customized so we can tell this one apart from the other ones. Now if I go ahead and navigate to the window test directory, you can see here that I have two files. I have the init.py file, which is exactly the same as the one that I showed you how to make in the previous video. Simply imports the files herein as a library so that we can use them. And then here in window test.py, I don't currently have anything. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy exactly what we did here in the Python scripter and go ahead and paste it into Vim here. And with that, we should be done.
So I can go ahead and write my changes here. And here in Krita, I should restart the application. And then, now that we're back here, I can go to Configure Krita under Settings. And you can see here, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we have the Window Test plugin, which we can enable. And it looks like when we enable it, we get a syntax error. Ah, it looks like I left the name My Extension in the script somewhere. One thing that will happen, and this is actually an important uh, learning example, so I will leave this in the video. One thing that will happen, if you try to enable a Python plugin, and for some reason the Python plugin is broken, then the name here in the Python plugin manager will become dark gray like this. And if you hover your mouse over it, it will actually show you the error that Python returned when it tried and failed to load this script. Um, and we can read the traceback under my mouse there. It says module not loaded, and then it gives a description of the traceback. And at the very bottom of the error message, it says name error, name my extension is not defined. And what that means is somewhere in the script, I left the template name, my extension, and didn't change it over to the custom name that we gave, our script. So that's actually a good learning experience. So I will leave that in here and go back and fix that error right quick. Okay, here I am back in the library file, and you'll notice that the error that we were getting occurred here in the very final line, the extension line. Rather than window test here, it, the name my extension was actually left there by accident, which was the default name that came with this template. So I just went ahead and changed that to window test. And while I was in here, I noticed another error that I had. Uh, I had just written QWidget here without attaching these parentheses to it. Uh, you'll want to do that. You can't just pass the class. You have to pass an actual object of QWidget to QMessageBox. So this, what I have here, is what you will want your final version of the Python script to look like when you go ahead and try to run it. So we've got that done. So we can go ahead and write the changes and then go back over here to Krita and we can restart it. And then from in here, if we go to Settings, Configure Krita, and down to the Python Plugin Manager, you can see that window test is no longer grayed out, and so it's functional. So it works now. There are no more syntax errors. Um, and I believe that since we actually checked it before it grayed out, that it should have been loaded up this time. So if I hit OK and go here to Tools, Scripts, yes, you can see that window test is now loaded up, and we can use it. So let's go ahead and click it and use it and see if it works. And look at that. It works. We've created a little window pop-up here that just says it works, and we can click OK to close out on it. And just like that, we've written our first successful extension for Python. So good job for following along with this video so far. Now I should say that this tutorial actually shows you how to do several very useful things beyond just creating simple extensions for Python. Namely, it shows you how to use some of the basics of the PyQ library, which you will need to be able to use in order to manipulate the GUI of Krita in any kind of significant way. And it shows you how to trigger actions that are outside of the context of the simple extensions, which most useful extensions will want to do something like that. Most useful extensions will want to trigger some sort of action that can do something useful within Krita itself. This show when function that we made, any arbitrary Python code could be in there, and that code would trigger every time that we run the script by clicking it in the tools scripts menu. Every time we click that, whatever you put in the show win function would run. So you can see how powerful and useful that would be. You basically have created a custom button on here in Krita that can do whatever you want it to do as long as you can program it in Python. And that about does it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you. I know that this was a, a lot to cover in this one particular topic, more so I think than I've done in my previous videos. Hopefully you're able to follow along though. In the next video, uh, I will most likely cover how to create dockers, which are the next major type of custom object that you can create to interact with in Python. But yeah, that'll about do it. Thank you all for watching once again, and I will see you next time.